Hi, this is Samantha Inoue Hart. I'm the Chocobo from Final Fantasy Unlimited, and you're listening to The Electron Show. Thank you! On this episode of The Electron Show, a special look at MTAC Anime Convention 2014. I know you're gonna dig this. MTAC 2014. On this episode, Dark One loses something. I haven't had cable in a few years now. Meletius finds something. Thanks, Wikipedia. And Retro gets it together. Got fed up with it. Welcome to the Electron Show, the program for the positively charged culture. And now, here is your host, Retro. This is a special anime convention edition of The Electron Show. And all throughout the show, we will hear the sights and sounds of MTAC 2014. In the game lab, Meletius gives us a few tips on Resident Evil 6. In the conversation pit, it's no cords and pimento cheese. And in the tech shop, it's an overview on avoiding internet scams. And our funny guy guest for this episode is stand-up comedian and radio host, Joe Crawford. This is The Electron Show with Dark One, Meletius, Misan, and your host, Retro. MapQuest really needs to start their directions on number five. Pretty sure I know how to get out of my neighborhood. Extraordinary. <laughs> Hi, this is Dan Green, the voice of Yu-Gi-Oh! And you're listening to The Electron Show. MTAC Anime Convention 2014. MTAC started in 1999. Uh, this is, it's been going pretty strong now for a decade and a half. My first one was in 2005. I started volunteering with the organization the year after in 2006, joined a full on staff in 2007 as a community relations manager and just worked my way around. The MTAC anime convention was like a storm, a hurricane or tornado. But the complete antithesis of Dorothy's storm in The Wizard of Oz. And yet I found the eye of the storm, and in it was Samantha Inouye Hart. And I was able to ask some interesting questions and find out what it is like to be an anime voice actor. That I have ever played? Yeah. Ooh, my most recent one that I really fell in love with was Isis from DC Universe Online, which is a MMO uh, video game for Sony. Um, I really liked her because when um, when I started reading for her, they gave me um, access to the 52 comic. And when you read the whole 52, a large portion of 52 is about Adriana Tomas, who is Isis, Black Adam's wife. And then there was also um, a continuation of uh, 52 later on with Black Adam, where he, you know, she dies a horrible, horrible death yeah. um, in the story. She, um, she gets killed by the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and Black Adam kind of just goes ballistic and, and tries to destroy Superman and Batman and all them. Um, in the game, it takes place right after 52. Oh, right. And so I'm still at that very angry point in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or undead, I guess you could say. I'm brought back t as a zombie, and I'm angry at the world. And so in order to channel that, you have to read 52. You have to know her backstory. Um, you have to understand that at some point, you know, Felix Faust takes physical advantage of her when she's in this kind of zombie-like state. Uh, you know, bad things happen to this girl. She's sold as a slave to Black Adam, you know. Uh, he eventually woos her in 52, but, you know, then she's, a, she's this good girl. She makes this bad guy into an actual likable character. Um, 
as an anti-hero. You know, he, he actually starts to do good things. And then just so many bad things just keep happening to her that you can't fault her for becoming an yeah. evil witch, I guess you could say. I'm trying not to swear. Um, <laughs> when she's brought back as a zombie. And so, you know, the goal is that she wants to become human again, but whether or not she can or not, it's still to be seen because yeah. they're still writing her stories. She's uh, So I've been keeping up a lot with, with what's been going on, reading the Teen Titans comic. Because, uh, yeah, she's... She she went loopy, yeah. <laughs> you know. So um, and she's she is a force of nature. Yeah. Um, she can control, you know, she can control the growth of trees, plants, you know, the weather. She can. Yeah. She's she is a goddess in in the sense of how much power she has. Yeah. And when somebody has just you know been pushed to the point of going over the edge. You know, she wants to come back, but whether or not she's able to, we don't know yet. And so, yeah. um, acting out her roles are very emotional. Yeah, you know, and it, it's uh, it's not a feeling that I have naturally. <laughs> you know, I can't really just sit there and be like, oh, let me get some bitchiness out of my my Mary Poppins <laughs> bag. I, you know, I it's really hard. You have to think about it, and yeah. you have to empathize with the character. And so, yeah, that, that's why I like her a lot. This is Mystery, and you are listening to The Electron Show. American author Ayn Rand once said, Every man is free to rise as far as he's able or willing, but the degree to which he thinks determines the degree to which he will rise. Hi, my name is Leela Moss from Roman Remains and you're listening to The Electron Show. While driving yesterday, I saw a banana peel in the road and instinctively swerved to avoid it. Thanks, Mario Kart. And now, another episode of Sparkle Girl. Okay, so I was playing this Ocarina of Time game, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and so apparently you have to go to this place called the Temple of Time, and then you play the Ocarina of Time to open the Door of Time, to go to the Pedestal of Time, where the Sword of Time is, to become the Hero of Time, to go and sleep somewhere in the Temple of Time for seven years, and then you like wake up and you're like sexy, and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm 19, and then you're the Hero of Time, and then you go Tune back Tune in again time next time. And- for another episode of Sparkle Girl. And I just got really tired. This is the Electron Show. MTAC Anime Convention 2014. Wow, MTAC 2014. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just exhilarated and all her thing. <laughs> you had a lot of fun. You oh, had... shoot, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what was your favorite part about it? Oh, my favorite part about it is just about everything, except I got to talk to Vic and Dan Green, and I had that quiet time with Samantha Anway Hart. Ooh. Talk about chocobos, uh. which will come up a little later and everything. So what was your favorite part about it? I love just the atmosphere about it and the vendors and the little buttons that people made and I just loved what people were doing. Yeah, and but you, you really liked the video room. Oh, yes. People were screaming and oh, yeah. all that <laughs> because of Super Smash, uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Press the A button. Press, Press the A. <laughs> Go down. Down. No, Pikachu. Why? Why do you have to pick Kirby? That was awesome. I, I really like the uh, Korean music the k-pop presentation the broom was packed yeah and everyone like when they played the music everyone sang to it oh yeah and everyone knew like every single person the artist that and I, yeah and uh, out of all the songs all the video and everything i think bap warrior uh i, I just love video. that yeah that's, i like, love my favorite. that one but also 
there's this creepy thing right when I walked in. I was just walking down the hall, minding my own business, looking <laughs> at the vendors. And all of a sudden, I feel like this presence behind me. And I look behind me, and Slenderman's just walking <laughs> behind there, just staring at me, no, and then no, passes no, me. No, no, no. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, I got a shot of a couple of them creeping up behind you, which was really funny. Yeah, and, that was that was fun. I mean, it was amazing what happened in, I mean, everything, because the people's costumes were completely amazing. Oh, yeah. It's all I about mean, everything. And I found Waldo. Ooh. Waldo. It was him. And I was like, Waldo. Oh, and he, he, he was all startled at, at first. It was, you know, the, you know, the halls were just, just, it was a throng all over the place. Mm-hmm. But I was, I've been looking for you for 30 years, man. Where you been? And he, then he, then he cracked up. It was pretty funny. So we got, we got lots of photos for that and everything oh, uh, on yeah. electronmagazine.com. So you can check that out. So now let's go exploring and hear about all this stuff for the guys that weren't there. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> If Carmen Sandiego and Waldo ever got together, their offspring would probably just be completely invisible. Ah, hi there, I'm Vedetta Marie. I'm a cosplay... I don't know what I am. What am I? Cosplay professional. What am I? (laughs) Sorry, I suck at this. I don't know what I am. Okay. Hey there, this is Vic Mignogna, Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist, and guess what? You're listening to The Electron Show. MTAC. Anime Convention 2014. MTAC is now running 14 years strong. Uh, we've grown every single year. Last year we hit the number of 10,000, a little bit over, which we were very excited with. It has typically been in downtown Nashville. Uh, we have moved it to Murfreesboro, so it is here now. Early numbers show we should be able to keep growing. I can't say any actual numbers, but it, it, if you were here or ha- were here, All the people that were here are just excited to be here. So uh, MTAC in general, over the last 14 years, it's been amazing, and it has continued to grow into what it is today. Well, who got together and said, hey, let's (laughs) let's do something nuts? (laughs) I'm assuming there was probably somebody and a couple of beers and a garage night that was like, you know what? We can do this. I know so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. Let's do it. The, the, the city didn't expect a turnout like this, <laughs> Yeah, li- a, little, a little behind the scenes story. Uh, for those of you that are here and or was here, uh, Murfreesboro was not ready for this amount of people. Yeah. Uh, we gave them warnings months in advance to say, look, last year we had 10,000 people downtown Nashville. We can handle that. Murfreesboro, we were like, we had 10,000 people. We want to let you know. They were not prepared, and basically we think it was probably a miscommunication somewhere in the hotel staff to say, oh, no, we got this. We're we're, we're good. Because yesterday we had the fire marshal show up. We had several police officers show up. Uh, They're here for the safety of the crowd. So I think they were a little overwhelmed and uh, taken back. So, yeah, they weren't exactly prepared for it. We still have a few police on staff, which are just here for safety concerns and fire marshal. So it's good that we have those here. We're glad that that they're here. But we have our staff as well that's for that specific purpose. Yeah, my, I, I was really enjoying watching the hotel staff with gaping mouths going, what the, <laughs> who are these people? This is, and they're, but you know what? Everybody's polite. Yeah. Uh, they're having fun. It's really one of the better conventions of any genre that I've even been to, and music ones, anything. Everybody's really polite and yeah, just I, having a ball. Yeah, that's the- you can't do that under pressure. Do you know something cool that we should know about? Is there something we forgot to talk about? Let us know. Contact us at www.electronmagazine.com But it looks weird from the outside. Stay tuned for more from MTAC 2014. They were trained by Dr. Spock. And now, it is time to enter Area 42. The Electron Magazine Tech Shop. Nobody wants to get scammed, right? Why 
do I go and check my email every day and I have tons of these questionable emails and you try to get rid of them and they just never go away. What's the deal? I don't know where they come from, but I know they need to leave. Well, a lot of them come from Russia and China and Nigeria. Well, I will say I haven't been getting a lot of those emails of late that say I am the grandson of the great Poobah of Nigeria and I've got $50 million and I'll give you 20% of it if we'll just pass it through your bank. That's, that's an old scam. Classic. But I recently got, recently I mean like two days ago, I got an email very similar. The return address was actually Japan. Supposedly it's this American military colonel and they found these millions and millions and millions of dollars in Iraq and now he's in Afghanistan and he wants to bring his share of the money back to the United States, but he needs somebody. He picked me because I'm supposedly so honest and he's going to give me, get this, 40%. Right. Now, I'd like to believe that no one out there in, in our audience would fall for something like that. Probably about a decade ago and mm -hmm. I first set up my email that was active mm -hmm. it got really bad really yeah that fast. was the heyday i think about 10 mm -hmm. years ago yeah i thought no one will fall for this stuff so then i got to looking into it and i found out that there were actually american citizens that you know woke up in the morning after going along with this scam thinking it was legitimate that had their entire savings completely you know sucked right out of the bank out of their bank account then, on top of that, they actually traveled to Nigeria to try to get their money back. Oh, wow. Right? No one ever heard from them ever again. And you think, okay, well, that's a very, very small percentage, but it, it's a shame that it actually works. The only reason why these guys are pulling these things is because, obviously, it works. It works for some people. The majority of the people aren't going to fall for it. But there are some clever, modern scams happening every day right now that are hard to tell. So what we want to do is we want to talk about what to look for as far as how these scams go and what to avoid. Is there something particular that, that you've noticed that sticks out? Not so much with email. I'll be honest, Gmail has done a great job of filtering it out. That's very true. Some of the services, especially like, yeah, Gmail, if you use Gmail, yeah, they do They do a good job not letting the stuff through in the beginning. These these clients will look out for you, but there's only so much they can do even still. There's, you know, there's limitations. These guys are able to get past some of this stuff. There's methods behind it uh, right. to just blow past the filters that they use. They pull a scam, people figure it out, they block it, then they figure something else out and get through. Change the game up. Basically, half of the planet wakes up in the morning, like you and me, and they go, gosh, what do I need to do to get out here and earn money so I can pay my bills and make a living and feed my family? The other half of the world wakes up in the morning and goes, gee, what can I do to get out here and steal money from these people that go out and earn a living? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, it's an absolute daily battle. The number one rule I think we could share with people is... If you're not expecting something, don't even open it. Just delete it. Right, exactly. Right, because, look, they'll even pretend that they're the authorities to, to kind of make you trust them in some way, thinking, oh, obviously this is from somebody that knows, or for, it's from this big firm, it's from PayPal, it's from whatever, so, gee, I better click and open this. They'll put a cloak over the email with a header and a footer that resembles the original. You know, say if you're getting something from your bank, they will use those banners that the bank uses and look exactly the same. So you got to be really careful. Pay right. attention even, to the. They'll even set up websites that look extremely legitimate. You think you're uh -huh. logging into PayPal you, you or gotta something. You've got to be very, very weary of the, uh, the address that everything's coming from and where right. you're clicking. Right, exactly. Yeah, most of this stuff, and I'll just look at it just for the fun of it, because it's, it's very interesting to me. And the hyperlinks, of course, they try to hide them, but if you can hover over them, you can actually look at where it's going. The actual hyperlink, it will be .cn, you know, it'll be Nigeria, China, it'd be, you know, one of these places that are notorious for that type of thing. And another thing, 
official websites are not going to shorten their URLs. Yes. Banking or PayPal, none of them that, that make transactions are, are going to do that. Exactly. Yeah. And see, your bank and whatever, they don't just send out arbitrary emails either. Right. This is what happens. If you get an email that says your PayPal account has been compromised, well, don't click on a link in that email. If, if you're in doubt, if you, if, even if you think it's legitimate for some reason, just log into PayPal or eBay or wherever it says it's from or Amazon. Just log in there, log into your account directly and see. And guess what? There won't be anything in there about it because right. it, was, it was a trick. And keep in mind, places like banks, they have more personal information of yours than just banking information. They have your phone number. They have other ways of contacting you than just email. I have had my account compromised, and I received phone calls. Yes. Always go to the source. Go talk to a person, a representative in person for, for the bank account. Talk to them directly. I mean, if somebody's working there, they're not going to scam you. That's their job is to protect right. you. Don't click on any links in emails. Just go straight in, log into your account, and check it out. Yes. A couple of easy ways to figure this out is a lot of this type of scamming emails are coming from countries that the English language is not the primary language. And so a lot of times the grammar will be just really bizarre. Uh, yes. Another thing is, you know, act now, supplies are limited. I mean, you know, even even legitimate sales. Yes. What they try to do is make you make a snap decision. Mm -hmm. Anytime you come across anything that requires you to make a snap decision, don't do it. Even if you like the guy. Basically, the old um, carnival barkers and everything, they called it the Coney Island walk down, where it's like, you'd expect to pay $100 for this, <laughs> or maybe 80 maybe 70 but no, it's 1995. <laughs> Never make a snap decision. Mm -hmm. That'll help you in the scams, of course, but in legitimate sales, don't make snap decisions. It's not worth it. If you're being pressured to make a snap decision, you shouldn't, you just should walk away. I'll tell you what, relating to that, yeah. doing your research, it's really convenient to be able to pull out a smartphone and look at prices to that product or something that compares to it. See, now that's, that's the interesting thing about the 21st century, because just um, it's, it's a really interesting um, – I have a theory that that's one reason why we're having a little economic shakedown over the last couple of years. There's bigger reasons why we are that are much more serious but part of that too is we have such information at our fingertips with mm -hmm. these smartphones and these tablets and everything which is a good thing it's destabilizing established retail it actually kind of hurts even the consumer in in a certain way which we won't really go into that's not our purpose right here but use the tools that you have especially in these times the smart tools that we have uh, used to be just science fiction. Mr. Spock with his tricorder, that was science fiction. We actually nowadays have things that are much more powerful than what Mr. Spock had back <laughs> on the Enterprise in 1966, right? <laughs> I would say uh, be skeptical of anything and everything. And if it's not believable, most likely it's not legitimate. You're darn tootin'. Hold it! Hold it! What do you want to do with me? You can subscribe to Electron Magazine for free. Keep up with new articles and informative stuff as soon as it happens. To subscribe free, just visit us at www.electronmagazine.com and select the free subscription information to learn how. Hey there, I'm Vedetta Marie, and I'm a cosplay professional. I'm Matthew Lasseter of Scattered Out Fashion, and, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to The Electron, Electron Show. And we aim to entertain you. Hi, 
Hey, this is Samantha Inoue Hart, and I'm Korang Ri from Sakura Wars, and you're listening to The Electron Show. <laughs> MTAC Anime Convention 2014. When you, when you get thousands and thousands and thousands of people in costumes and geeky attire coming here just hoarding around each other, doing all these crazy things, playing music in the halls, just taking photos, enjoying everyone's time, playing board games, video games, panels, all sorts of content. This is just nothing that compares to this. But it looks weird from the outside. When Final Fantasy uh, Unlimited was, was at the Austin studio, they actually offered me the role of I, the little girl character, the main uh, girl character. And then I asked, I was like, oh, okay, cool, a little kid. I can do that. That's not a far stretch for me. Um, and then I asked what the show was, and they said it was Final Fantasy. And I was like, is there a chocobo? And nobody in the studio knew anything about Final Fantasy. I was the only geek out little kid in the studio and I was like oh my gosh is there a chocobo and they were like well yeah there's a chocobo it's a bird and I was like can I be the chocobo and they were like well no because you can't be two main characters um and I was like well just give give my role to somebody else I want to be the chocobo and they were like well that's like three thousand dollar pay cut are you sure you want to be a chocobo I'm like yes I want to be the chocobo so from the very get-go I was always very excited about that and then they gave me all the all the other little monsters in the show and, and the cactars and, and whatnot. I was in the library this past weekend and I found a book in the library with the title How to Read a Book. If you can't read a book, how can you read a book on how to read a book? <laughs> Nor is good people in bad situations trying to make their life better and it always fails. No matter how much good they try, or even flawed characters trying to make their lives better and it never works. Pulp Fiction by Tarantino, uh, well, Sin City by Robert Rodriguez, you know. Um, heck, you could even look at The Matrix as a neo-noir. It's always something bad happening to these people and yet we keep coming back hoping, hoping these guys are gonna get better. Um, you look at uh, Charlie Houston, a really good um, modern day noir writer, and his Joe Pitt series is a vampire tale. And you're rooting for this vampire you know, who's in a, a gang war with other vampires to do better, but his life sucks. And he always gets his butt kicked every time. And it's like your Indiana Jones. He gets his butt kicked every time. Your, your Han Solo types. These are kind of noir archetypes that you root for, even though they get their butts kicked, they get their licks every now and then, but the next issue, someone else is always kicking their butt. You think that, all right, this guy's gonna be awesome, and then you bring out something like Boba Fett for Han Solo, and he's gonna kick his butt in. So, flawed characters are more interesting, because you want, we as readers, and as fans, we want them to be better. We want, we're hoping they find the girl, or you know, in case of a girl, they get the guy, but something always happens. He gets the girl and comes to find out she's married to a mob boss. Now, what are you gonna do? Do you kill the mob boss? You know, you want to. And Fargo is another classic reason. Coen Brothers, they did Fargo. That's classic noir, but it's not draped in noir. It's 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 bright as day. It's not even shady. It's not even at night. But it, And it's cute and charming at the same time, but it is hardcore noir. He's, this, he's trying to have his wife kidnapped so he can get the money and then save her. Who does that? Is the Electron Show. Contact us at www.electronmagazine.com. And now, another episode of Sparkle Girl. I heard that steroids are bad. I think you get them by sitting on a record player. Tune in again next time for another episode of Sparkle Girl. And now, it is time to enter Area 11, the Conversation Pit. They've got a workstation in there, they've got a, a computer and a, and a television screen. 
Okay, I read an article not long ago. They've come up with this new buzz phrase or whatever, and they're calling people cord nevers. And what it is, it's millennials, quote unquote, that have grown up and they don't have cable. They don't have satellite. They don't have like regular television. Mm -hmm. They watch everything through the internet or YouTube or, and they don't pay for cable. They don't, they, they never have. Do any or either of you fall in that category? Uh, I mean, do you have cable or satellite? Or yes, I yes I have I have cable. Well, of course we know why you do because you have to watch Walking Dead. Yes, so you, that, so you that pay is like a hundred bucks a month for thousand channels you don't watch just so you can watch. Walking Dead. <laughs> it don't yes. <laughs> It makes no sense. What about you, Dark One? I haven't had cable in a few years now. Ah, see, now that leads me to the next thing. I have come up with a type of person in a phrase, and I call it cord no mores. And we mm. are cord no mores. In other words, got fed up with it, and we're going on to our ninth month without satellite or whatever. We had satellite, which I, I liked. But for about two years, I noticed the only thing I was watching was anticipating the new series of uh, Top Gear UK coming out. Ah, yes. Yeah, I was, I was a complete nut over Top Gear UK. <laughs> um, UK version, of course, you've got the younger guy that's into 9-11s and, and eats ketchup on everything. And then you've got the... Yes. The uh, my favorite guy James May, who is the kind of the techno geek. So that's that's my favorite guy. And then you got the older guy Clarkson, who is the higher end, you know, blue blood set or right. whatever the orangutan as they call him. And there's an inter <laughs> interesting interaction between the three. But anyway, I digress. For like two years, even the commercials were re recycled. And I noticed the different movie channels; they would just trade movies around. And for two years, it was like everything was the same. There was nothing new. And, um, you know, BBC America was pretty cool and, and some, some, some of the other channels and things. And I, I finally just got fed up. And I said, well, why are we paying all this money for this stuff? And we weren't even watching much and anything. So we said, eh, turn it off. And we haven't missed it. Absolutely. There's uh, the programs that the girls like to see and the stuff I like to see. And, of course, I like to check out C-SPAN occasionally. And Hold on a second. Sorry. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's um, the special needs cat again. Is it Roxy? Possibly. Yeah. Yes, Roxy. Roxy. Roxy the special needs cat. Honestly, it seems like all his cats have their own... Mental um, disorder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the seven dwarves. You, know, you have dopey and sleepy and... But his his is, is crazy, insane. And they're all a little dopey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm back. Oh, he's back. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> so I better heard, now? I heard crazy and dopey. Yes, I am. <laughs> they know about No, we were, talking about your, we were talking about Roxy, the special needs cat. We were wondering if that's uh, what yeah, she She was picking at the door, and they were making noise. Anyway, cord, Sorry, cord never, so we're not... No, that's no problem. Cord, cord nevers. Mm -hmm. There's a there's you know these financial people and, and investment people and things that I some of them I pay attention to, and they're basically waiting for the cable industry to just like overnight just fail. Well, you got YouTube and Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Hulu. Yeah, the oh. girls, my girls watch all kinds of stuff on Hulu. They watch uh, uh, Crunchyroll if you're into anime. Crunchyroll is an awesome website. Oh, yeah. yeah. WWE is also uh, making. Own. Yeah, yeah, they're they're making their own move to be internet exclusive. Yeah, if you like watching people getting power bombed all day long, that's that's the, that's <laughs> hey, the stream station. Man, to they've go to. they've got everything. Not not quite everything, but they will have everything available you, on their servers. You, you it know, is insane. You know what I want to see? Huh. Royal Rumble baseball cage match. Oh, yeah. the XFL wasn't good enough for you? No, I want to I want to see someone hit the ball and then get put into a figure 4 and then <laughs> someone grab the ball and then they get power bombed right there on second base just oh, <laughs> <laughs> KO. <laughs> then I this is wow. like a this is like a, a James Con uh, the rollerball from the set. Well, they remade that, but yeah, uh, that was when yeah you know, Hollywood was into making all these remakes. It's not as not as good. Stupid but yeah. question. Huh? There's an original. Oh what year my. did the original come out? Oh my! Get here we go again talking about movies and stuff. Good I'm, gracious! I'm really what? curious about this. This is like early 70s. I'd have to I have to IMDb it, but. Uh, yeah, Rollerball, the original one, is James Caan, and it was a 75, you, you, you uh, looked it up, okay, yeah. Uh, it was based off a short story 
which appeared in the September 1973 issue of Esquire. <laughs> I knew there was a 73 involved. Thank you, Wikipedia. Somewhere. Thanks, Wikipedia. In the South or where I was from, whatever, I've never seen roller derby. Now, my grandfather and there was a lot of like older ladies that loved professional wrestling. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> where I grew up, there was a wrestling rink that was uh, quite popular. And they had a TV show that was shown all over at least the southeast and everything. Uh, and then the guy that did it was Gordon something. But they would get on and go, hey, I'm talking to you. I'm going <laughs> to right. come down here. I'm going to beat your brains out next week. You see? <laughs> yes. And so you know, join us here at the uh, Sports Dome and watch them beat their brains out. Or, or. That's right. And um and yes. back back when I was a kid, it was amazing. All these uh, senior ladies, maybe I should say, even even a lot of church ladies, you know, they were just totally into the wrestling show <laughs> that they had every Saturday. Yeah, get it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kick her in the head. Right? And there's these nice old ladies, you know, during the week, you know. Oh, what a nice young man. And they're just all nice. Uh. But then Saturday for one hour on television, they'd watch, tear his head off. <laughs> <laughs> to agree with you about wrestling and uh, how, how people enjoy watching it, my, my mother, uh, the day that she got married, my uncle had to drag her out of the, uh, the limo because she was watching the, uh, Ultimate Warrior against uh, Hulk Hogan, and she almost missed her own way <laughs> because she <laughs> really wanted to finish watching it. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Yes. Oh boy. So yeah, but it was like a rock show. They, it was. They, it was. It was based after these big arena rock shows. Yeah. You, Same principle. Up, big hair, you know, <laughs> pyrotechnics, <laughs> yeah. tights. Yeah. Neon colors. You got a show. Yeah. <laughs> When you trip in public, not even trip but have a slight misstep, why does it feel like everyone in the world saw you and is simultaneously calling you an idiot? Every groan is music to my ears. MTAC Anime Convention 2014 Inside of this world, where we're at confined, it's normal. Yeah. In quotes. <laughs> when you go outside of the con and you try to explain to people what you're doing and what's going on, oh, there goes one right there. You know, <laughs> you know, it, it's for us, it's normal. So it's like, yeah, whatever. This is cool. This is great. For them, they're like, eh, uh, <laughs> that's weird. I don't want to talk about that. And it's like, well, what are you into? Oh, I'm, I'm in sports and I do this. Well, then you're a geek of sports. Yeah, 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 so exactly. Yeah. If these people were to look at you, they'd probably think the same thing because yeah. they don't like sports. So it's just funny seeing the contrast, you know, outside versus inside. Yeah, yeah. I noticed like a lot of the, the cosplay, the costumers and everything, there's, there's even family. Oh, yeah. And I, and, and I have to compliment you on having an atmosphere that's not only fun for really anybody. I mean, it's not Casper Milk Toast. Or right. Dora the Explorer isn't walking around here, is she? <laughs> no. But... There's families walking around and having fun together. They're yeah. all dressed up. It's like the Dragon Ball Z family. It's like <laughs> they bring every the, character. The baby in the <laughs> stroller is dressed up. Like, like Yeah, Pokemon. I've seen it. It's a lot of fun because it, the, the parents that have been doing it for a long time, yeah. cons are not their first rodeo. They've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. They bring their kids, yeah. and then they just start a whole other generation yeah. of kids who love this stuff. So it's amazing to see the kids that are enjoying it now. So that maybe in five, ten years, they might create something else that, you know, someone else can enjoy later on down the road. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very exciting, you know, to see a whole new generation of kids. So, yeah. Fantastic. And, and you look like you're holding up all right. <laughs> I look like it, but I can fake it really, <laughs> really good. Really well. Sorry. Really well. It's a, it's a, it's a long process. It is. Uh, we start on MTAC, what are we, 14 now? 15. We're already in motion for MTAC 15. Wow. Um, and your other events. And our sister event, we have two sister events. We have GMX Geek Media Expo, and then we have the Nashville Zombie Walk. And this and, year, the, the Geek Expo is? In October. It's the week yeah. right before Halloween. Uh, I think the 26th, 27th, 28th, something yeah. like that, right before Halloween. Nice weather in Middle oh, Tennessee. Oh, we're hoping so. It's going to yeah. be a blast. Usually is that yeah. time, yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to all that. That's already in motion as well. Uh, matter of fact, Geek Media Expo is more broad, whereas MTAC is anime and manga and other things related with anime. But when it comes to Geek Media Expo, I can talk about tech, 
I can talk about video games. I can talk about you know old board games, stuff that we grew up with. So it's a little bit more broad. So if anime isn't your thing, come down to Geek Media Expo and we'll have a blast. This is Mystery, and you are listening to The Electron Show. Attending an anime convention will be fun like you've never experienced before. A special thanks from the crew of The Electron Show to Nicholas Qualls and Rusty Greer, and of course the entire staff of MTAC 2014. Very nice, thank you. It's just got to be funky. Hi, this is John from Big Black Delta, and you're listening to The Electron Show. You know the pinwheel recipe mm-hmm. that we came up with? You, you guys enjoyed that a lot, I know. Dark One, why is pimento cheese so expensive? Convenience. It's already made. Pimentos are <laughs> just red bell peppers that are grilled and then chopped very finely. That's a pimento. Go Vinegar, figure. right? They're usually pickled. Or uh, that's basically so. what pimento is. So I went into a grocery store, and they had these uh, little containers that was normally $3 and a half or more. Uh, they had them marked down to $0.99 cents because the expiration date is like a week from now. Hmm. So guess what? We got the flour tortillas out, laid a layer down, put a bunch of spinach in there. Roll them babies up with my double layer, just like the uh, the other pinwheels. And wow, Ooh. they're fantastic. Sounds tasty. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was snacking on them before, and I'm going to go get some more here in a few minutes. So that's my Sounds variation. Good. Flour tortillas, pimento cheese, and spinach. Stupid question. Okay. How do you think that would taste with a couple of slices of turkey? Mm. You wouldn't taste the turkey. It would be just textural because the pimento cheese overpowers everything. See, I thought of that. I thought anything you do, if you put pimento cheese in something, it's going to overpower everything. So my whole reason to put spinach in is to have something healthy in there besides the pimento cheese. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) <laughs> so I won't be uh, worshiping the porcelain god tomorrow morning. <laughs> you, know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. On my nope. knees on the tile mm-hmm. going, oh, I'll never do it again, please. Why? Uh, why? Why me? Why? <laughs> Every groan is music to my ears. It was so good. It's, it's a textual thing. So, yeah, if you throw turkey in there, you're not going to taste it. I think you're just wasting good turkey. In fact, <laughs> I resisted the turkey because Lady Retro said, hey. Let's get some turkey. No, I resisted the turkey. It'll just make me sleepy. I'm just going to throw a bunch of spinach in there and guess what? It works. So there's another recipe. If you use just plain cream cheese and turkey and spinach, a little sprinkle of bacon, but it is darn good. Oh, yeah. No, cheese is just so great. So So that's our snack for the night. And now it is time to enter Area 52. The Electron Magazine Game Lab. The location is so secret. It is Area 52. <laughs> Zombie games. Resident Evil 6. Hey, d- hey, Dark One, have you, don't, have you played Resident Evil 6? No. Uh, hmm? I haven't touched one since Resident Evil 4. Oh, really? Really. I'm still working on the classic ones from the PC. Ah. Uh. Miletius, yes. Resident Evil 6 had the coolest promotion. It was like a spider web. Yes. And it was a big thing. Guys have been playing it now for a couple of years. Right. And yeah. I, know, I know guys that just have never been able to get through it. But you just completed all three characters. Yes. Except for the secret character. Yes, Ada, Ada Wong, as I have. But that, uh, well, that wasn't even worth, Ada Wong's not even worth messing with, right? Oh, uh, yes, she is. Uh, only issue in any real fan of a uh, Resident Evil game, especially the uh, newer ones, Ada Wong, when you play as her, she was in the fourth one as well, and you could play as, as that character too. It's just everything is so limited with her, like ammunition, her, her damage ratio. She takes more damage. The enemies are even even more uh, ferocious, and that's, that's what I'm running into playing as her right now. The other three characters, oh, yeah. you got completely through the game. Yes, I, I went through with Leon, I went through with Chris, and I went through with uh, Jake, which Jake was 
I'm, I'm glad that I played as Jake last because it, his his story was probably by far the most tedious. <laughs> Just it, it had a lot of stress behind behind his character. So. Is that is that an attempt for the game company to make a game that's long lasting that you get a lot of bang for your buck? You get your money's worth with the game. I mean, it's not easy by any means. The enemies are different per character that you play. Like when you play as Leon, most people know the Resident Evil franchise for zombies. Well, when you play as Leon, that's what you deal with mostly. Like 90, 95 to 96 percent of most of the enemies that you fight are zombies or some form of a zombie. Then when you play as like Chris Redfield, the the enemies change to these things called Javos, which are human hybrid insects yes it, uh, that's it's mm-hmm. just the way that i described it there are some people you will shoot them and instead of them dying they will mutate into half human uh half grasshopper or half mm-hmm. uh slug or so for uh, somebody that's never played the game who do you start with what's the best leon leon, leon. okay by by far leon just because of the fact that you're dealing with zombies and you know zombies are not they're smart now don't get me wrong they're not like the typical ones from like the older resident evil games like you Mm -hmm. know just walking around or you know resident evil 4 where you had to deal with the uh ganados where they just basically walk around just stand and creep around these guys actually pay attention some of them will run at you they'll jump at you and grab you tackle you to the ground so there's no there's no way to predict but there's no way to no, predict. It's, it's very, it's very hard to. Is there a way to tell how the zombie's oh, yeah, going to attack? Yes, you, you can. The, the longer you play the game, you'll start to tell because, like, if a zombie's getting ready to lunge at you, you'll see them kind of shimmy and mm-hmm. squat, and then they'll just take off and then they'll jump. Mm. Um, there's others that are like, uh, well, they're kind of naked, but they're. Um, they're just, you know, they walk around and they're more, um, they're more passive? on the, yeah, well, they're more, they're, they're massive. And also they're, well, uh, I said they're passive, more like a, not massive, but oh, passive. passive. No, yeah. no. Um, well, I mean, really compared not, to, no, actually they're worse. The ones that are not wearing any clothes are a lot worse. They're, they're more aggressive and they're stronger. Mm-hmm. They well, are, they they're are a lot ugly. stronger than, they're more disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, there, there are a lot of different creatures that you run into. There are, uh, like, for example, there's a big blob-looking guy. That's a zombie. So it's, mm-hmm. it's like a eight-foot-tall, 600-pound blob. But you, but you um, recognize these guys and say, oh, and there's a certain M.O., yes. Yes, modus yes, operandi that each one has. Right. As you play the game, you figure that out. You'll be able to identify which ones are which. But the problem later on is that when you get further into the game they just start throwing them out all over the place so they they take that they take the training wheels off of when you start up the game and getting used to everything pretty Mm -hmm. quick like they're like okay so you should be used by by now what these guys are going to do we're going to take the training wheels off just go at it and then you don't know what's going on well and then let me ask you something like we're talking about resident evil and they give you such a bang for the buck because you buy it and uh, I've come across guys that bought it two years ago, and they're still playing it. Right. Here's the here's the only issue, though. The the downside. You get the physical copy of Resident Evil Six. You also get the physical copy of the DVD, the mm-hmm. uh, Degeneration movie. Mm-hmm. But as for Resident Evil Four, Resident mm-hmm. Evil Co. Veronica, and Resident Evil Five, the Gold Edition, you have to download those. Mm. You actually have to download those. Same thing applies to the PS3 version. Exactly. That had one through five <sighs> included with it. Which mm. I wish I would have been able to. I, I'm a big fan of Resident Evil 3. Two, two is always going to have a special place in my heart, just because, <laughs> just because of the fact that I did unlock Akuma. Some of some some mm. of our listeners may know what I'm talking about, but mm-hmm. there there is a Capcom uh, Easter egg in there, which is probably the hardest thing on the face of the planet to <laughs> to achieve. I've done it twice, and wow. it's very hard to do. So yes, but well, are uh, there are there certain companies that seem to be a better value as in terms of uh, 
Well, you game. you get a game, games. and the and the game has great longevity. I mean, you can play it for a long time. I'll, I'll put it this way: I'm a big fanboy of Capcom. I have been for a long time, from mm-hmm. everything from you know the Resident Evil series to a big big time fan of the Street Fighter series, except for uh, Street Fighter Four. But that that's a that's a, another topic we'll get to at a different okay. time. All right. Um, I'll hold you to it. But yeah, yeah, that 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 that's going to be a that's going to be a rough rant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm not I'm not happy with them at all about that. We had they, those before. But yeah, I mean, Capcom usually makes really good games. Uh, the Resident Evil franchise, especially, I mean, it has a very large replay value just because there are there are more things that you can unlock. I mean, you can't necessarily even even with how they're doing it with multiple players and another thing too i meant to tell meant to explain too is that there is co-op so you can play co-op with other people you can do it either online or by console but i'm talking about just you buy a game it's brand new to you and is there certain companies that give you great value as far as the first time you play and the first oh, experience yes. with it? Yeah. Okay. What what companies right. are the best at, at that? Bethesda. 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 Okay. Exactly. Bethesda. Explain. That, that, that yeah. Right I, I agree with you there. One. Why? You you explain uh, why. Every single Bethesda game from the uh, Elder Scrolls series mm-hmm. to Fallout. Right. I mean, pretty much anything that Bethesda's had their hands on. Uh, the number one, they give you an open-ended world. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a pattern or path that you can go, uh, but ultimately you can just, as soon as you get through this tutorial, just walk out into the open and just do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, that's what yeah. I was getting at is even replay. It's like a first play. Well, you know, Resident Evil is the classic, but for the most part, this has been way too overplayed. You know... I love my mother. My mother is 100% Italian. And I tell my friends when they come over that, you know what, she is going to try to feed you. No matter what you say or do, she's going to try to give you food. So you need to be a step ahead of my mother. If you want a lot, tell her you want a little. Boom, you get a lot. If you want a little bit, tell her you don't want any. And she'll be like, oh, come on, eat just a little, manja, manja. And if you don't want any... You just have to sh- that's all. Thanks for joining us for the Electron Show, the program for the positively charged culture. Your host was Retro. Join us on the World Wide Web at www. Dot electronmagazine.com This is your announcer, Mystery, inviting you to join us for each episode as we explore all things awesome. Copyright for The Electron Show and Electron Magazine is by our executive director and producer, Tony Rolo. All rights reserved. just amazes me that it's 2014 we've put people on the moon but we can't put a landline in the country <laughs> yeah, the countryside